So to celebrate the end of 2023 and 10 months on this land, we're gonna do a little homestead tour. Starting with what will be our house? My name is Karenna. This is Shanae. And we're building strength by moving off grid. Become part of the story on Patreon and read our private blog. Sponsor a square meter of the Enough Garden and watch it come to life. There is the start of our foundation. There's the start of our roof. And on the side here, we'll have clay and wattle walls. And the floor will be cement with the foundation and then probably a cow dung and clay mixture for the floor. We are learning as we go. We have people showing us the way and we're also looking deep to do the best we can. Right now, we're living in two three by eight tents, um, which has been okay, except when it's hot, it's like an oven. When it's windy, it's like you're in a big plastic bag that's blowing in the wind. And uh, the zippers are breaking. But that's motivation to get this house done and hopefully preserve our tents so that we can use them in the future for camping when we're no longer living in them. This is some of the wattle that we've been collecting. There's some sands. And our other building materials are over here. Some more sand, which we've been collecting by the bucky load. This beast of a bucky makes everything possible. Some pallets, more blocks, chicken wire. A lot of these materials come from the dump actually. And here is the building materials and more dump materials. A part to the roof and some more wood for room two. These bricks will go in the foundation with some cement. And there is our tool shed. This is the tiller we've been using to prepare the soil for the gardens. In here, it's probably dark. It's like a barn with some more building materials. And potatoes that Shanae will plant out. This is what Shanae was working on last night. So planted in this now is a variety of tomatoes and African heirloom bush beans and zucchini. We've got some biomaterial all throughout here. And a few things planted that are doing really well. There were some onions and beetroots planted here with seeds that we got from the store and they did not take. But now Shanae's replanted them with heirloom seeds that hopefully will have a better result. We have lots of biomaterial, hay, feathers spread around, leaves, twigs, and then we mix that in once in a while to hopefully get that to decompose and give more life to our soil. Back here, we have all African heirloom seeds, which means they're indigenous to this area, and also they will reproduce the same plant that we will harvest, where typical seeds from the store will not. You could replant some seeds if you capture them, but they may or may not give you a nice plant. But heirloom seeds are heirloom. They are going to give you the same seed over and over for generations. So we can create a seed bank, hopefully, with our community and everyone will have enough seeds to grow a variety of things that are going to do well in this area because they're from here. We've got some corn and beans planted near each other so that the beans will climb the stalk as they grow together. They also complement each other, giving the other the nutrients that it needs seems to be doing well. Here we have some melons, cantaloupe, and potatoes. 
that also seem to be doing well. As you can see, lots of hay trying to prevent the soil from drying out. But you can also see some dry pieces underneath. And this is the Enough Garden. The Enough Garden was our first official garden project here on the land. And we built it in honor of my childhood friend, Brittany, who for a moment forgot that she was enough and made the decision to leave us June 6, 2021. So in honor of her and the many people who also feel they are not enough, we've created the Enough Garden. And people had the opportunity to sponsor a square meter in honor of someone they loved or just to remind everyone they are enough. So with the support of 11 people from three different countries, we transformed a 16 square meter dry clay area into a sunflower patch with some other cover crops growing underneath. So we're going to let this eventually break down and reintegrate back into the soil, which we spent a lot of time trying to bring life to. We started out by digging the 16 square meter area out to 60 centimeters deep. And then we refilled it in with a variety of biomaterials like cow manure, live, leaves, twigs, um, biochar, hay. And we put that back in with some healthy soil as well that we dug out from the areas where the cows poo. And we put that back in lasagna style so that when we planted, hopefully, the roots will grow deep and keep the soil loose so the soil will not recompact into the hard clay it once was. Nice. So these are some of our Pekin Phantom Chickens. The adults were gifted to us from a neighbor. And this guy is one of the first to hatch from our broody hen. They might have become a little too tame. Say hi. Yeah. I think these guys are almost three weeks old. Yeah. We have three roosters, two hens. No, three roosters, three hens from this batch. And then another group that has two hens and four roosters. But they're even smaller. Excuse me. You're pecking at me. Oh, hi, Mama. Yeah. Yeah. We've become chicken people. Yeah. Are you guys hungry? Yeah, I think it's time for breakfast. I'll go get it. Don't worry. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, you guys are hungry. So you can see behind them is the shelter that Shanae made. Inside is a hunting blind that was my brother's. And the outside is PVC pipe shelter with some other recycled materials. But uh, it hasn't been super strong in the wind. The door is broken and Shanae wants to fix it, but also wants to just restart and build a second coop similar to the one she just did out of a bunk bed. So these guys are a bit more skittish. We just got them as a gift from another neighbor who's moving, which is really sweet because she reminds me a lot of my aunt. And since we've been here, she was Shanae's first friend when I was gone and we've been swimming in the dam most days. So it's sad now that she's left a few days ago. 
the chickens, which are a mix of Australop and Orpington. We're not actually sure. Um, right here. These ones are also about 12 week old teenagers, and then we have some babies closer to the house. But when they lived by her, they were free range, so they're very skittish. Not like these guys who will climb right on your shoulder. Oh. You don't have to run. You don't have to run. Yeah. Nom nom nom. These guys are a little less trusting. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. See it. This is the bunk bed that Sinead transformed into a chicken coop, which is very awesome. It's very sturdy and I think it's cool to transform something from our old life in Cape Town into something that will benefit our new life here in Eastern Cape. And she did a damn good job. It was so windy and rainy the last few days that we had to cover this up and put bricks around it so babies didn't get wet or cold. These are from the Bantams. Hey! Yeah, hello. Are you hungry? Probably. Over here we have more Australop mix. Yeah. Also, not very tame. Hey. Soon we can go outside. Go more outside. Hey, it's okay. Yeah. All right, I'll let you eat. Go ahead, Mama. It's okay. You can see they're still getting used to people. It's okay. Here, we have Sinead's genius design for stopping the rain from getting in the tent. These are part of the materials for building the house, but the tents were getting flooded, so we didn't really have a choice but to put something there and some weight down to protect what we've got. Here's a little bit of clay that I've been digging out of the foundation up there that I want to play with, maybe make a flower pot or something. Here's some healthy soil and some seed blocks, which I don't think these ones have anything in or they didn't sprout. But we've been doing lots of those as we transplant everything into the garden. I'm learning a lot as we go. Some more seedlings. Outside our tent with the broken zipper. So we've made our own door. Right here is our only tap, which connects to the 5,000 liter Jojo tank that's at the top of the land, which we pump every two to four weeks now that we're irrigating. And we do that with a generator for now. We're hoping that once we get the clay house up, that we'll be able to put these solar panels up plus two more and a battery and well a battery in, and inverter right now we have two 390 watt panels this one we move throughout the day because the sun moves 
and we're in the southern hemisphere so we try to capture as much sunlight during the day as we can so that our battery is always 100% at night and unless it's cloudy it's usually okay because inside we have a 2000 watt battery inverter that unless it's hot works great so we're hoping that once we can set up the other panels and battery inverter that we have, we'll be able to pump the water with that throughout the day consistently, so we don't need to use a generator. But back to the water. That is our only tap, which we have the ability to connect it to the sink. There's another wire, not wire, Another thing that connects it to the shower tent on the other end, and this connects it to the washing machine inside. Then we put the hose to the washing machine in this to drain that into this tank, which we can flush out onto the garden. We use fully biodegradable soaps, so it's not an issue, but there still could be fibers of the t-shirts and stuff in so we have a filter and want to get a better filter so we're not putting any of that stuff into the soil we're trying to heal this is our shower with some spinach and herbs out front this is the hot water tap and the gas that connects to the shower head above there as you can see, the tent's getting a little dry rotted, ripping. So one of our plans in the new year is to build a more stable shower structure that we can hook the water tap and everything up to and it won't blow away. But next to the Julka is the home biogas. You can hear that gurgling and filling these up. That one's empty. With fertilizer. Oh yeah. Lacquer. So this is our home biogas system. Like uh, which we fill every few days with some cow poo into here mixed with a little bit of water that builds up gas in here there's sandbags on top which create some pressure so that the gas can be connected to the tents and the fertilizer comes out here the system can be used for human waste but then it requires a different way of disposing of the fertilizer which for now we're happy with our current toilet situation so that we can get as much fertilizer for us and to share as possible. We're just very happy to have gas to cook whenever we need it. Over here. This is where the gas connects. Goes through this bush and to our tent. And that brings us to the next question. Where do we poo? Next to the home biogas, we have this cute little walkway which goes to the toilet Shanae made with one of our friends. All you need is a few pallets, a seat, and a bucket. This is full of leaves and twigs, small things that we mix in there. So that when it's time for the bucket to be emptied, we take it down there, dig a deep hole, and throw it in. So that's it. This is our homestead. We'll keep getting better day by day. The sun is rising. It's time to start the day.